Ghosts and Goblins, now that's a hard game. Maybe not as hard as the Industrial Revolution and its consequences for the human race, but still, it's up there. You know what would make it really hard though? Adding a third dimension, clunky controls and frustrating artificial difficulty. Welcome to Maximo Ghosts to Glory, a 3D hack and slash platformer developed and published by Capcom for PS2 back in 2002. Originally planned for Nintendo 64, but delayed for several years, it was Capcom's attempt at bringing back old-school kick you in the balls gameplay and evolving the classic Ghosts and Goblins formula into a newer generation. I mean, we have Capcom's seal of quality here. These guys never fuck up. What could go wrong? Let's pick up our sword and armor that's gonna break in two hits and find out. Maximo has a slightly more involved and kid-friendly story than the arcade classic. You don't get to see Satan barging in and interrupting your character's meat-pounding session with a princess, which is a shame. Instead, you see Maximo storming the castle trying to save Princess Sophia from the clutches of the evil Akil, who forces Sophia to marry him, as bad guys usually do. After beat-slapping the princess, the evil sorcerer kills Maximo with a single magic missile. Thankfully though, the Grim Reaper himself appears and strikes a deal with Maximo. He will keep our hero alive as long as he manages to stop Akil from raising the dead for his army, because without any dead people, he'd be out of a job. Wait, Death himself is employed? Maybe he's a freelancer. In any case, he's billions of years old, he really should have saved up for his retirement by now. Anyway, with Maximo back among the living, he's ready to begin his journey to save Princess Sophia and defeat Ganon, I mean Bowser, I mean Akil, once and for all. Do I even need to comment on the story's nature? It would be cliché of me to say that the plot is as cliché as it gets. I did find it interesting though that you're working for Mr. Death and it is amusing seeing Akil reviving one of his subordinates just to have him tortured until he dies again. Fucker is vicious, way more brutal than you'd expect for such a cartoony game. I'm sure you already know that since this is a Capcom game, the presentation is gonna be stellar, and for the most part, it is. Being a spiritual successor to the Ghosts and Goblins series, the atmosphere is dark and foreboding, and the areas are full of peril and mystery. That doesn't mean the levels aren't colorful as well, and we have famous manga artist Susumu Matsuhita to thank for that. The characters have that westernized anime feel to them and each area has a unique cartoony theme, adding to the game's variety and enjoyment. Animations are also great, as you would expect, and each character is full of life, making the game just that more charming. As for the music, unfortunately it didn't impress me as much as the graphics did. Well, the sound effects were nice and memorable, no issues there, but the music itself wasn't anything special. Every track is a variation of the classic Ghosts and Goblins main theme, because, you know, it's a Ghosts and Goblins sequel, duh. Every level's music is slightly different to properly portray the atmosphere its area is trying to evoke. So the graveyard's music is spooky, the jungle's tracks are mysterious and tribalistic, and the tundra is pirate-themed for whatever reason but essentially you're listening to the same melody over and over again, it just didn't captivate me. Even so, Maximo is the perfect 3D reimagining of the Ghosts and Goblins series. The atmosphere is dark, but cartoony at the same time, the landscapes are detailed and the characters add a beautifully charming tone to the experience. All in all, it's just a pleasant game to look at especially with the widescreen pads, even though some UI elements aren't scaled properly. Maximo may look and feel amazing, but what about the gameplay? Well, it's complicated. The game combines the classic Ghosts and Goblins difficulty with the clunky controls of Dark Souls 2 and the bullshit throwing everything but the sink at you from I wanna be the guy. But first, let's talk about Maximo himself. He can double jump, slash horizontally and vertically, do a ground pound shockwave attack, crouch, and use his shield to block attacks or throw it around to hit enemies, until it breaks that is. Unfortunately, controlling Maximo isn't fun at all. Every single move has a huge delay to it, and you have to wait for its animation to finish before you can do anything else. 
You also have no air control when you jump, and you can't even control the camera. You can reset it behind Maximus' back and look around when standing still, but that's it. Can you imagine a 3D platformer without proper camera movement? Absolutely fucking inexcusable. And the stiffness of the controls demands nothing less than utter perfection. Slightly mistime an attack or a jump and you're getting hit for sure. Granted, you actually have a health bar instead of the punishing health system of the arcade classic and you can pick up armor to extend it. But get hit enough times and that armor of course will break leaving Maximo with nothing but his boxers, which are surprisingly pristine for the situation he's dealing with. If I were him, my boxers would definitely be brown on the front and yellow on the back. Wait, that's not right. Anyway, Maximo's controls are only one half of the bullshit equation. The other half is the levels themselves. They are filled to the brim with enemies and hazards you can only avoid if you're lucky, played the level before, or going about it incredibly slow. It's just a giant beginner trap extravaganza. In the graveyard levels, the ground randomly gives way without any warning. The jungle is full of sinking swamps with crocodiles that pop up again randomly to deal massive damage. The Tundra has the all-time favorite sleeping ice, combined with insta-kill pits, demanding extreme platforming precision. Every different area has its own stupid gimmick. And I already know what you're gonna say, skill issue, get good scrub, what rings you got bits, but it's not even the difficulty that I have a problem with, as Maximo is really not that hard of a game, but it's frustrating, clunky and unforgiving for no reason. The collisions are messed up to the point where an enemy's arm is longer than your fucking sword. Your attacks will constantly phase through enemies and if your ground pound doesn't land on the correct micropixel, it just won't count. Danger is everywhere, enemies constantly pop out of the ground, with iframes of course, and you just have to be really slow and calculated about your every move. Because if you die and lose all your lives, can you guess what happens? You have to pay the Green Reaper death coins to continue, which you obtain after collecting 50 souls. Every time you get revived, the number of coins needed to continue increases. And if you run out, it's game over. Okay, no big deal you say, I'll just restart from my last save. But you can only save after defeating a boss, and only if you choose to. At the end of each boss fight, a helpful witch will appear and you can either grab a power-up restore your health or save the game. Holy hell, not even the original Ghosts and Goblins is this brutal and unforgiving. And it sucks because overall the game is very enjoyable. The levels are fun to explore and full of hidden secrets. There are tons of different power-ups that increase your stats and imbue your sword with new elemental abilities and the platforming is simple and enjoyable despite its clunkiness. You can even choose in what order you play each hub's level and replay them to farm coins and souls. But man, slowly traversing each area, terrified at what will come next, isn't a very fun way to play in my opinion. The game constantly fights you with its shitty controls, annoying level design and unforgiving life and continue system. If those elements were fixed, Maximo would be a masterpiece. Oh well, there's always the sequel, right? I said a lot of negative things about Maximo, Ghosts to Glory, but maybe I'm just another casual who plays Counter-Strike for kids. Even so, I genuinely enjoyed the game, despite its frustrating difficulty. The graphics are beautiful and charming and the gameplay is pretty solid, a nice blend of platforming and hack and slash action. If only the difficulty wasn't this frustrating and the game wasn't so unforgiving and tanky, I would have loved it. If you're a hardcore gamer who loves old school styled games, then it is a worthy addition to your collection. If you're not, I'd still recommend it, just arm yourself with a lot of patience. And that's all I had to say about Mad Maximo, Ghost Warrior, I mean Maximo, Ghosts to Glory. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like if you did, comment your thoughts below and subscribe for more stuff, you know how it goes. Have a great day and until next time, take care and have fun.